What's going on YouTube? Gibber White right here representing the movement towards improvement back at the range of Woods Valley Golf Club. You know what it is. Today's video, I just wanted to share with you guys how to record your golf swing. As you can see, I got my Casio set up behind me, which I like to use when I'm teaching, when I'm working on my own swing. It allows me to record my swing in 300 frames per second, which means I can see what the face angle is like as it's coming into the ball. You'll see a lot of the YouTube uh, golf swing videos in that type of frame rate. So this video is gonna share with you what I like to look for. A lot of you guys have been checking out the links in the description box and, be sending you, and have been sending me your swings, but understand that the better videos you send me, the more information I can give you on what to do. The more information I have, the more precise information I can tell you what to do to improve your swing, short game, putting, etc. First off, what I like to see is a face-on view and a down-the-line view. So face-on would be perpendicular to the camera, facing just right at your chest, and down-the-line view would be behind you. Do not send me any of your videos if you only have one of those views. If So if you only send me a face-on, and not a down the line, I will not review your swings. I need both, it's like 50% of the equation. If I see down the line view, I can kind of insinuate and guess what you're gonna do at impact, but face on is just as important, if not more important than down the line. So send both angles. Obviously, the um, better frame rate possible, like I said, this does 300 frames per second. Basically what I'm saying is the slower the video, the more clear and more slow motion the video is, the easier it is for me to pick up everything. So if you guys can, this is absolutely vital. Borrow someone's iPhone 5, iPhone 6, cast your camera, and do as many frames as possible. I think the new iPhone 6 does 240 frames, which is absolutely great. So take your time. I'd rather you you know, wait a week and borrow your phone from your buddy when he's got time and record some swings at the range and send those to me. I can see a lot more and I can give you a lot more information. Another thing is lighting. As you can see right here in the beautiful sunny San Diego, which is great. I know a lot of you guys, it's snowing you're practicing in your basements, et cetera, but the more light, the better. And obviously, if you can do it during the day, um, especially when you're using that slower motion type of video, you need more light to keep up with that many frames and the shutter speed and whatnot. Clothing is another big key. Um, please always have your shirt tucked in, and if you can, wear a, con a contrasting belt like mine. I really like to see pelvic tilts and in terms of what the left hip is doing, what the right hip is doing, anterior, posterior. That's my technical terms that I won't share with you in your analysis, but if you could tuck your shirt in, have a contrasting belt, that can help me see what the pelvis is up to. Also, if you're recording with your phone, I have a lot of people sending me swings where they're recording it in portrait mode, where the phone's vertical. If you guys please can, turn it to landscape mode. When you record it in portrait mode, it ends up putting those two big black bars on the side. It's very ugly, so landscape is better. So that's just a few tips, you guys. I'm gonna kind of run you through some of my angles. I'm gonna record myself right now, kind of show you where I would like the camera to be, but also understand the better video you can give me, the better information I can give you. And I've refunded people. I charge $50 for an online lesson, and I just had a gentleman the other day send me a video. His camera was posted up on the floor, looking at the sky, horrible frame rate, and I, he didn't give me a down the line view. And I just, I don't feel comfortable, you know, telling him what I think it is if I don't have more information. I need more pieces of the puzzle. And I probably could have done a swing analysis and he probably would have enjoyed it. But for my own standard, I want to give people serious, actual information and I need more information with better angles, slower frame rates, better lighting, etc. Also, please, when you do send me your swing, tell me a little bit about your ball striking. Tell me what your big miss is so I can try to correlate while looking at your swing. Okay, I can kind of see why you're hooking it or why your contact would be bad or why you're slicing it, etc. You guys. So, Thanks for watching, you guys. Record those swings, get them to me. Check out the links down below. I want to view them. I might bust out 34, 30 or 40 swing analysis in a day because that's just the way I do it. I'm getting um, really good at it. I'm getting quicker. I can see more things now. So, yeah, send me your swing. You guys, this is Gabriel right here, representing the movement towards improvement. MT, I know a lot of dudes, a lot of die, buying, buying. Hit me up on Facebook, Gabriel. I'm writer, Instagram, PGA Tour Driven. Instagram game is strong. I'm out of here, you guys. Pace. Okay guys, here we are in the back end of my MTI Nation membership website. We got two courses available right now, the Hawaiian Instruction and the Putt Like a Pro. And me and Kelvin actually just got finished up with a golf training program that is filled with stretches and exercises that are golf swing specific. And a lot of these exercises are quite different than TPI might I add. So if we go over here to the Hawaiian Instruction, Kelvin actually made an article on the video I just did on how to record your swing. And I'll be more than happy to send this to you guys for free if any of you guys want this. If you forget some of the angles in the videos and you don't want to watch the whole video again, all you have to do is just send me an email 
at sendmeyourswing at gmail.com and put in the subject line, you know, send me free article and I will send this to you guys. So thank you. Okay, you guys, here we have a face on view. All you really need to do is get this type of angle. Maybe I'm maybe four to six feet away. I don't really even need to see the top of the club face at the top of the swing. Make sure your camera is about 48 inches um, off the ground, so about four feet tall. Uh, make sure you're on a tripod or whoever's filming is very steady. Um, this is a good angle because I can see what the you know, hands and forearms are during, during impact. I can look at pelvic tilts. I can also look whether your belt buckle is dropping or lifting. So I know when you're going to anterior or posterior, whether that's too early or too late. I can also look at the angle of your spine right here, which I do. Um, and like I said, I can see you know what your rate of flip is, uh, what your rate of closure, etc. I like to look at the left leg, I like to look at the pelvis movements, and then we go to a down the line view. Try to put the camera about between the ball and your feet. Like I said, 48 inches high the camera should be. And if I could just maybe barely get the top of your club face at the top of the swing so I can see, you know, mine's a little shut, which I like. Uh, I can see where the butt end of the club is. I can look at your trunk balance. Uh, I can say, look at your pelvic tilt. I can look at your base, your neck. I look at that in terms of rotation. And obviously, if you have a high enough frame rate, I can see your club face angle right here. I can get a good idea for path. I can see what your hips are doing, especially I need, you know, need your shirt tucked in, get a contrasting belt. It really helps. And then once again, I can take a look at face angle path. And I don't look at the swing maybe too far from here because by, by then, the ball's already gone. And what you do... Too far after the ball doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. And if you guys want, more than happy to send me a little more of a body zoom. Like I said, I really like to look at the pelvis and spine movements. Um, and obviously it always comes down to re release pattern. You know, I can see a lot of you know funky body movements, but if your hands and arms are stable during impact, you have a slow rate of closure and you have a slow rate of flip you can get a lot away with a lot of funky stuff so thanks you guys send me your swings at send me your swing at gmail.com links down below and i will do my best to help you thanks you guys peace